A realist walks into a bar. A realist walks into a bar and orders a half-empty glass of vodka. The term realism, I think, gets under people's skin. It's hard to, you know, uh, compete with a paradigm or perspective that, that's called realism. So then you become an idealist, right? The idealist would walk into the bar and order uh, a half full glass of uh, vodka. Realism is a theory essentially about power and security. States relentlessly seek power and security because they exist in a self-help system. You seek security, you seek prestige, and, and most of all, realists would say you seek autonomy. Because in a world where you can never trust anyone, you don't want to be interdependent. Liberals believe in interdependence, thinks it leads to peace. But realists tend to be very skeptical about interdependence, because who wants to be mutually dependent in a world that's very dangerous? Essentially, you know, today's friend could be tomorrow's enemy. And to the extent that that's true, you never know who's going to be aligned against you down the road or who's making plans against you now. So you can never have enough power. Like, how much is enough power? I don't know. You know, who's going to be lined up against me in 10 years? Realists don't believe in sort of utopian, muddle-headed schemes that would provide a perpetual peace in the world based on some notion of a natural harmony of interests among states. Instead, realists see the world in terms of tragedy and evil, and um, essentially, like, the best you can hope for is that, you know, you, uh, people choose the lesser evil and um, try to be as good as they can be in an evil world. You know, I, I guess the bottom line is that, you know, Realists may not be angels, but in the real world, angels often turn out to be brutes. Because, you know, if you're moralizing, crusading, saying, you know, we don't like your human rights policies and we don't, you know, we don't like your regime the way it's not democratic enough, it's not liberal enough, well, then you're going to get involved everywhere. And the problem with promoting democracy is it doesn't work, you know, first of all. And second of all, you know, it almost always leads to a quagmire. Again, there is no natural harmony of interests in the world. Realists understand that. So you just have to live with diversity. And I think liberals don't understand that. Most of American wars have been, particularly since the, the end of the Cold War, have been all about promoting democracy and human rights. And liberals would actually say that the only just war is one that promotes human rights. Whereas a realist would say the only just war is one that promotes the national interest. And if there are no threats in the environment, well, then you retrench. So essentially, you know, if I had to give one sort of, you know, view of what, re how realism sees the world, it would be sort of a Hobbesian war of all against all in a state of nature. The state of nature meaning there is no 911, there is no world government. It's just everyone out for themselves. Which doesn't mean that war always occurs. It just means that the danger of war is always lurking in the background of all international politics.